cool. Move this over here. Cool. Hello, let's see. I'm trying to catch a stream for ages. Oh, hey, what's up? Oh, hey, Axis, how are you? I'm doing fine. Uh, at a table, yeah. I just want to get this thing done. So basically the idea is that I've written this state differentiator. I kind of YOLO'd it. So now we're gonna write the state integrator. Um, first person shooter game um, it's hard to make a first person shooter game on Roblox and the reality is I don't know how to make one easily anymore it's kind of funny hey what's up Chip my condolences in advance yeah I kind of yellowed this I think I'm actually going to change this to be like the ID and then this will be the list and then this will be the hash where we take a state and it gives us an ID, but I'll, I'll do that in the future because right now I think this code might actually be working. Okay, so basically the idea is that I want to have a table on the server that I edit and then I can replicate those edits to the clients instead of replicating the entire state every time because it'll be huge. So anyway, I'm making a state differentiator to be able to track differences in the state. And uh, now I'm making a state integrator to be able to integrate those changes in the state. Another name for state replication is pain. Yeah. With making it. Um, okay, so can I help you with making a Roblox FPS game? Probably not. If you have specific math questions or things, I can probably answer that, but otherwise, don't really know. Let's see. Copy video URL. Let's paste this in here. Yeah. Also, music's not playing, right? Um, yeah, so Zach, uh, you say another name for state replication is pain. Well, I haven't really tried doing state replication before, at least not in a big way. So <laughs> I have not felt the pain yet. It all seems pretty straightforward though, but uh, also I'm uh, extremely smart. I'm just kidding. Let's see, uh, bit reader. Okay, so basically as of right now, what I have is a state differentiator. It has like a state in it. And then uh, every time I call this, this diff function, it'll give me back some instructions and data in order to, um, that tells me what changed and how to, it basically just tells me what changed. And then I have the state integrator where I can uh, call this integrate function and with the operations object. So this, is, this basically is how the, this thing changed and it will uh, integrate these changes into the state here. And 
Yeah. So we have a table list, cache, cache indices. Okay. And so anyway, um, this integrator is going to just run through and like read stuff. And it's going to be like, okay, we got it. Uh, this is for core. Hat kid. Bro built like a businessman. Um, this is, this is practically for practice, but I'm intending it for core. Um, this is one of the fundamental things that core needs in order to really make it good. Well, I see a red and black thing. Hmm. Let's see. Okay. That's not. Okay. So reader, I'm reading the operations, which is a binary string math dork. Yeah. Thank you very much. Hey, your Your profile image is not red and black. I don't know how I could possibly recognize that that is you, if not for your name. Okay, so I've played Call of Duty, Call of Duty Black CF5 World at War a long time ago. That's awesome. Oh, it's the Red Baron. Honestly, whenever I look. <laughs> So I do this thing where when I see profile pictures, I see animals in the profile pictures. Uh, I see a, like a falcon <laughs> in there, unless I get really close. But yeah, that is Red Baron. More like, a, I see more like a finch actually. Yeah, I, furry has messed me up. Um, so, Zach, if it's pixelated, uh, I would recommend increasing the quality. Okay, so basically where I am right now is we call this integrate function with the changes to the state. Yeah, that's understandable, King. The numbers. So these operations, these numbers mean different things, and I've kind of forgotten what they are. So... We have different operations, and they're numbered. Three is to exit, so stop. Um, but basically, what we, what we do here, I'll explain this. This is not the one I want to be in. So what we're going to do is we're going to read a table ID. This is going to indicate which table we want to make edits to. And then we'll get the current state that we know that we need to update. And we'll call this edit table function, um, which I'll actually need to call it, I think, with the cache table. Mm. Get table, table list. This is actually data. Uh, Table data from table ID, table data list. Okay, and so basically the idea is that uh, we have this edit table function. We're going to call it with a reader that reads off the flow of, an, of operations and objects, which is just how we're translating the kinds of stuff we're putting into the table. So that way I don't have to serialize it myself. And the idea is that so we have these different operations that are stored inside of this data that we're sending and um, operation zero means I think that we're going to insert something so we can actually look so add a state index so zero is to insert something new one is to remove something and two is to change something and three is to stop editing that table Making a maze game from scratch. Oh, that's really cool. Yeah, uh, making maze games is pretty cool, actually. I've only made a maze generator like once in my life. Oh, hey, I'm actually streaming right now. Nice. Right. Do you need 
Yeah. So I'm kind of hyped up because I took ADHD meds and also lots of coffee. Oh yeah. <laughs> coffee meds. Are you ready? Ready for what? I mean, you don't have to actually. I think I should be good at this point. Okay. Well. Just I'm so sorry. Let me know whenever you need. All right. <laughs> also, that was Henderson. I mean, Lido Zinnemann. Okay, so um, I can explain this algorithm later. I'm just gonna kind of jump into this. So operation zero, this means that we are inserting. And so inserting, we write the insert operation and we need to give the like instructions. So write insert. Okay, so first, oh. So I'm actually going to need to maintain some extra state here. Mm. So I can either make a class for this or not make a class for this. OK, whatever. Let's just do it. Oh. This is going to be a very simple class. Okay, so I don't need this stuff. Bit buffer dot new writer. It's called stack buffer, I don't know, whatever. Stack dot new. Is it writer first? I put the writer first. Okay. Um. I'll just put zero because that's the number of things in it. So. Okay, let's see. People are messaging. So can literally help me make a game. Um, yeah, I don't think there's enough. There's enough to go around. But if again, if you want to ask questions, I'm sure I'll be happy to answer. Other than like, can you please walk me through the whole thing? Control C, Control V is a lifeline. Absolutely, it is. Uh, let's see. Sorry if I'm asking. I just had an idea of getting help from you guys because I practically know nothing about coding and stuff. Um, yeah, it, <clears throat> getting coding isn't so bad. Just start off really simple. There's a lot of really good tutorials online that you can find for Lua. It's kind of abstract though, but oops. what you really need is kind of tutorials for Roblox itself, but you can start off with just getting to understand Lua, the language itself, and then it'll help you differentiate between um, like what is Lua and what is Roblox API, because for the longest time I had no idea, because I learned organically from reading other people's code. Do you have any tips for someone with zero experience? Oh, there we go. Look for some guys get familiar with basics. Yeah. Um, also, having like a goal is really important. Okay, so let's write the meta table for this thing. So function writer. Um, we'll just do push. 
but it's not a pop. It's a Q. It's like an infinite queue, whatever. I can change the name of this later. I don't need to focus on it, focus on it. So in, that's the number of things that are currently inside of it. So dot we'll make this a table. We'll just return self. Writer will be What is the terminology? Well, we'll just do write, and it'll just be an object. We could just call it data, whatever. And we'll just do, we'll iterate in. And we don't really need in, but it'll make it faster. And then actually this is basically done. Well, whatever. Finalize. It's actually, yeah, good enough. Q. Whatever. New reader. In this is the queue. We need the data. Well, and then we'll just do read. Don't care about that. We're just going to iterate in and then we'll return. Ah, that was easy. Okay, cool. So now that we have this, we're gonna also pass in a Q reader. Mm. Shoot. So this actually won't work. Bit buffer dot new reader. Uh, I'll need that. I'll also need to bit buffer new writer q self dot. And then I need to objects instead of objects. I'm going to change this from Q to Oh, it's getting the uncapitalized ones too. Let's see. What's that sublime theme? Um, I made it a bit myself. Hey, I'll talk. What's up? Piano song I wrote to Phantom Forces Radio Music. Oh, that'd be cool. Let's see. So remember the Rabbit 199 map? Not the revamp one, but the original one. Yeah, that's not that game anymore. Can I bring that map back? Well, I don't really, I don't really, I don't really feel very strongly about that. Yeah, I finally made a stream again. Wow, ten people watching. Wow, or nine, whatever.
There's a rare stream where Trey doesn't do math. Yeah, I'm not doing math right now. Crazy. So let's see. I'm doing programming, which I don't like. Even though I'm quite good at it, I think. Well, maybe not. We have a Q. We have a Q. Uh, yeah, right. I don't want to call this thing a Q because it's not. It's an object buffer. Right. I can just call it a buffer, actually. Buffer. Okay. Oops. Okay, now I'm going to change this from Q to normal buffer. New writer, object writer, we'll just call this Oh, I already have this named writer everywhere. This is not a good name for it. I should just call this um, <clears throat> object buffer. This buffer, new writer, object buffer. Maybe I'll just call this uh, bit writer. Okay, and this is the object writer. Oh, maybe I call this. Oh my gosh. <laughs> oh god. Well, am I going to make this mistake here? No, I'm going to call this object buffer. Object buffer. I, it makes me happy that they're the same length. Turn my sweater again, yeah. Honestly, most of programming is just figuring out the names. Ah, Niku, hi, OMG access stream. Dropping math next year, basically know nothing about advanced math, aw. One day I'll learn something. I have to uphold the math dog name. Yeah, I probably do. I can bring stuff up. Ooh, wow, look, it's... Wow. I need to figure out what this curve is. Okay, so what was I doing? Right, I'm probably just gonna actually rewrite this real quick again. State integrator, we have a bit buffer, an object buffer. We have this saved here, we have a table data list. The table data contains the table. Root, that is a better name for it. Okay, root, this is state, state indices. Okay, so this is one, though I'd like to keep parity between these. Okay, bit buffer. Okay, edit table.
So we are going to add a table with the bit reader and the object reader. Okay, we have uh, index object reader. just call this data but uh, okay so basically right now I'm trying to read I'm trying to get oh, I'm trying to uh, insert a new index into this thing and so basically what I need to do is One half naming, the other half rewriting. Yeah, right. Okay, so Safi, I'm trying to figure out why A over B over C is equal to A times C over B out uh, here. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of interesting. Um, you can understand it intuitively. Um, kind of like in terms of if I divide by a smaller number, here, look. <clears throat> so, you can take A divided by B divided by C. Well, you can think about it this way. A divided by this thing. If C makes B smaller, then B is not going to be as powerful against A. So, it's the same as saying first we scale a by c and then divide by b I, I i don't know i think this is reasonable you can also like th you can think about it algebraically like this right if you scale up the top and the bottom by the same amount then it's not going to change it right because this thing's getting bigger at the same rate this thing's getting bigger. So algebraically, if we have A over B over C, we can multiply on top and bottom. Right? And then the result is that we divide by C and then multiply by C, so this cancels out. So we get A times C over B. So algebraically, this makes sense. Is it possible to use math to improve the anti-cheat in PF? Yesterday, there were five simultaneous hacks. <laughs> Phantom Force is not written in a way that is conducive to anti-cheat. Unfortunately. Okay, so we're reading the index. So, so basically we wanna add a new entry to this table. That's what op zero means. And so we want to read where do we wanna insert this thing, which I can explain later. Um, because I'm actually keeping it, uh, all the indices sorted so that way it's always guaranteed to be accessed in the same order. you know what I'm talking about. I'd rather I know what you're talking about. Rather, I just wanted to reference you. I just wanted to recognize you. 
let's see. So index object reader read. So this will get us our index. And then our value will either be a table. So we need to actually bit reader read. We're going to read one bit. And then if this is a one, it means it's a table, I think. So if it is a table, we write a, a one, and then we write the Fibonacci ID, or we write the ID in terms of Fibonacci, using a Fibonacci description of a number, which is really neat. It's like a way to have small numbers be small and large numbers be large. So is table, so if this table, then, we need to, well, the value is going to be a table. Uh, get table data, table ID. The table ID is going to be equal to, let's see, well, we're just going to go to bit reader. Fib. Otherwise, uh, value is just going to be object reader read. So we're just going to get that. And now what we're going to do is We need to actually update the table data. So state indices. So here's something interesting. I'm going to explain this real quick. OK, so LTOP says, I'd be interested to learn more about the fib stuff. And so here's the cool thing about Fibonacci encoding of a number. So a normal number. Let's say we have the number uh, 1001101, right? So this would be uh, 1 plus 4 is 5, plus 8 is 13, uh, 16, 16, 32, 64. So plus 64 is 77, right? So this is the, in base 10, this is the number 77. It doesn't really matter. Um, and the thing is, okay, so it doesn't really matter. The problem is, let's say that we're like this number is actually indistinguishable from other bits in a bit stream. So like, let's say we have just a bit stream or like another number. So here's the problem. We're trying to read a number. Let's say that we need to start reading right here. How do we actually know when to end reading this number, right? Because this is number four. This is the number nine. Um, the number that we're trying to read is this one, but how do we actually know when to stop? Like, because we can stop anywhere. And so the, a cool idea is that if inst instead of encoding numbers in binary, there's like a different kind of binary that you can use uh, that ensures that you can tell the difference between where one number starts and another one stops. So Fibonacci encoding is just a different way to write a number down in terms of bits. It's a little bit less compressed, but it tells you when the number starts and stops. And basically the idea is that with, with binary, two, three, four, five, six, so you have these numbers and they have value, or you have these uh, digits and they have values. And so the first digit has a value of one, the second one has a value of two, four, eight, 16, and 32. And so you can use any combination of these to get any number that you want, um, assuming that this is unbounded. Uh, Fibonacci, what you do instead of using base two, you use uh, 
the numbers in the Fibonacci sequence. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, so instead you would do one, two, three, five, eight, and 13. And basically the idea is that, um, let's say we want to represent the number 16. I don't know if this is a good example or not. But the number 16, well, the largest number in the Fibonacci sequence that fits into 16 is number 13. So we're gonna write a one here. Now we subtract 13 from 16. And now we say, okay, well, does eight fit into three? No, that's a zero. Does five fit into three? No. Does three fit into three? Yes. So we write a one. Then we subtract three, get zero. Does two fit into zero? No. Does one fit into zero? No. Okay, now here's the cool thing. Um, I know it's not obvious, but the reality is that with this Fibonacci number encoded, or this number encoded with this Fibonacci sequence, you will actually never get a string of two ones next to each other. So here's what you can do. We can write another one at the end here and say, this is the start of the number. And if we write this in reverse order, so for example, zero, zero, one, zero, zero, one, one, this represents the number 16 um, in a way such that we can determine when the number stops. So if we know to start reading here, we can just look for the first occurrence of two ones and say, oh, bam, this is, this is a run of two ones, which means that we're at the end of this number. So we just ignore this bit. And this is the number 16 encoded in a Fibonacci, uh, base Fibonacci or whatever. And so this is like really great for encoding stuff. It's not completely um, efficient. It's not as efficient as binary, but it, it lets you know when the number stops. Which means that small numbers get encoded into small numbers and large numbers get encoded to long numbers. Um, and then also, So you never encounter two ones. I don't know how to explain this quickly and efficiently. Um, I don't actually even have an intuitive way to explain it either. But basically, the idea is that we look for a number system wherein we never encounter two ones together. And it just so happens that it, it is the Fibonacci sequence. So, um, so why is it the Fibonacci sequence? Uh, it just is. Um, it has to do with the idea that, like the Fibonacci sequence is the result of adding the two previous ones together to get the next number. And basically what this means is that if you want to represent five, you could do it with three and two, which would be two simultaneous ones, but you want to prevent this from happening, right? So you need a number that will be able to prevent these two ones from occurring. So bam, now we have five, if that makes sense. I'll, I'll re-explain this again though, because so basically the idea is that we want to come up with a number system where we never get two repeated ones, because that's how we know we're going to exit. So, and we're going to do it in little Indian style. So let's come up with a, 
uh, with a, the first digit has to be worth one because we need to be able to represent every possible number. So we need to be able to add one or subtract one from any number, right? So, because that will let us have the, uh, have um, unit granularity. Now the thing is we need to make sure that we will never have uh, a repeated number. So, well, I mean, we currently, we either have one or two, uh, or let's see, so we, this number cannot be one because uh, in order to represent the number two, well, we also don't need a base with the same number, so let's just write a two here. Sorry, this is like a super bad proof, but let's just start with these two numbers as the, as the values for each of the digits. Okay, so if we have the number three, if we want to represent the number three in this number system, right now we have to write one one, and we want to prevent having two ones together. So how can we do this? Well, we can have the next digit represent the sum of the two previous digits. So that way this one can be a one and these can be zero, which prevents getting two ones next to each other. Now, what if we want to represent the number five? Well, right now we can do it with a two and a three, but that gets two ones next to each other. So we have to be able to represent this with a single digit. So we write a five, which is just two plus three. So now we can represent five with just a one. And uh, yeah, so this basically guarantees that we can always um, represent any number with with no repeated ones. Uh, you can also do the same thing with three digits. So now I don't exactly know what to put for the next one here. Maybe four. I don't really know. If we want to do like a Tribonacci thing. But um, here's how the state replicator is. Or maybe I should actually just do some work real quick. Can I make PF2? Um, yeah, maybe we can do that. Okay, so now we have a root, table data list, state, state indices. I might just change this back to cache. I don't really know. I think I will actually. So we have remove table, da, 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 what are we doing? Bit reader, object reader. We already know that we have a table. We read the operation by reading two bits. If operation equals zero, we're going to read a Fibonacci that's gonna give us the index where we need to insert. Index, object reader, read. If is table, if we read the next bit and it's a one, then it is a table. Bit reader, we read the next Fibonacci number, Fibonacci encoded number to get the table ID. The value is gonna be set to this. And now we say table data dot cache index. value. It's going to try to get this table ID. If it doesn't exist, get table ID from a table, get table data from a table ID. If it doesn't exist, it's going to create it and it's going to return it to us. Table data dot cache indices.
table insert, table data, cache indices. We're going to insert into this thing, into the index i. Probably rename this i to like order index or something, or sorted index. Okay, um, I think we're actually done at this point. We need to now write insert, write remove. God, I'm hyper competent when I take this. Yeah, I think you should nab that for blocks. Super nice. Okay, so operator one, operation one, that's just removed. That's pretty easy. We just take an index. So we read the Fibonacci index. And then we don't care what the index or value is. All we're going to do is just say, actually, I have it. Can I lock this? So table. Dot cache. Table data. I'll explain this in a bit. Cache indices. And life index. Okay, op two is uh, change. So we need to figure out which index we're editing. We I technically don't need to give this, but it makes it a lot faster. Because otherwise, uh. like an OVN update. And we want to make this kind of fast, so it's worth the extra data required to transmit this stuff. Oh, I have top chat turned on instead of live chat. Okay. So we read the index. We grab the index, or the, the table index from the Sorted index, index, index. We remove, we don't remove it, we just index this. So is table, we're gonna read a bit. Perfect. Otherwise we break out of it. As soon as we get an operation, this is the ending operation. I think I'd prefer to save at the beginning the number of operations required, but instead of having an exit operation, but whatever. Okay, so we read a Fibonacci number, the table reader, table ID, self, edit table, we get the bit reader, the object reader, table data. Move on to removal stage.
Okay, and now that we've done this, table ID is zero, means that we're breaking out of So edit table, bit reader, object reader, table data. What am I doing now? I need to do removals. So Okay, sorry. Oh, good afternoon. Top chat, no bottom chat. Okay, so table data, get table data, table ID, we get the edit table, bit reduction, table. what am I doing? Right, we have the removals now. So I could go through this whole chain and figure out which tables no longer have references. But instead I'm going to write all of these, so all the removals. table cool okay time to go through this we have a bit buffer and object buffer. Take care of this real quick.
Okay. So I think I actually want to change this from indexing the table directly to, oops, table list. And I think I'll index it using the ID. And I don't think I need the ID anymore. I should actually probably move this. There, and I'll start editing this one. So I don't think I want it referenced by the ID anymore. I'll do that through this. I'll do a table hash. And the hash is going to tell us the ID that we need. And So self.root. Uh, well, this is just going to be ID one, right? And so then this unifies the structure. And this is going to be the existing state. Let's see. By the way, I'm streaming. What? So, warning. Oh, okay. Just streaming. <laughs> it always comes last. This is pretty solid code, I think. Should probably optimize this in the future. Oh, uh, yeah. We're going to say back to that freighter or like, group there, uh, person. I'm good, dude. Oh, I mean, there's one yeah. in the group that's saying that forever. I should probably check the tourist world. I just forgot to say it, but it will be here for me. Today I learned that I like looking at the different colors of code. Yeah, so um, this is a custom uh, theme or um, syntax highlighting that I modified a bit. <laughs> it's called um, It's named after a game. Celeste Dark. It's based on Celeste. And I modified it to be dark. I've never actually played Celeste, but. Ooh, that naming. Well, I forget how difficult most people find it. Yeah, naming is incredibly hard. Okay, so get sorted indices. We sort the indices, get table ID from table. <laughs> so table hash. So if it's a table, It's a table. We're going to check this, and it doesn't have an ID. Then we're going to create a table ID for it. We'll put it in the newest slot, or the most first, the first available slot. So, table list ID equals tab. So, this is the tab that we're giving, the table that we're giving it. Just ID. I don't need this. That's a bug. So table hash. Uh, table goes to ID. List ID goes to this thing. And then cache data, we don't care about this. Table cache data. Okay. 
So this is how we tell if it's a table or not and get the ID simultaneously. So then we have a remove table, which all needs to be rewritten. What did I do here? Oops. Remove table. So table data hash. Cool. So we're going to work on it. Okay, so let's go through this one more time. We're gonna get a table ID from a table. First, we check to see if it has, is actually a table. If it is a table, and we don't already have an ID for it, so this gives us the ID, we're going to generate a new ID, which is just serial. We check the current list of things. So, and then we need to update the hash. Well, we need to update the list and update the hash. It looks prettier if it's right here, though. Um, the hash, table to ID, bam, done. Table data list. Okay, ID, so this is actually a list. This gets us the list of caches. Cache indices. Next, a new one. We try to get the ID from the hash. Given the table, if it exists, and we, again, we don't know if this is a table. If the ID exists, we to return the ID. Now we need to remove the table. So we found a table that we need to remove. And I guess we'll index it with the table because that's how we're doing it here. Table ID equals C and here I don't think I've it's all called table ID. Cool. I think maybe I should instead of saying ID, I should call it table ID. Table ID Now when we remove it we do a fast remove. So in is like the last one. Okay. We want to remove a table, we get the table. We need to convert it into its table ID. So we reference it in the hash. Table ID. We're removing this one. Removing it, it's basically just this code. I'm gonna move this down here because this is the replacement one. I'll get rid of this. Okay. Table data list.
looks like tropical stuff, and I appreciate that greatly. Yeah, it's like very rainbow colorful. Uh, okay, so table to insert object. No, it was here. So we have the table ID. A list. We want to remove it from the list. So we say a list table ID. So we're going to replace and then remove the last one. Replace with the last one and then we remove the last one. And then we actually have a hash. So we need to update the hash as well. Maybe we update the hash up here. So hash tab equals nil. We need to actually do that one next because it might be the same table. This is like kind of ambiguous. So we remove this one. So we want to insert something. We have a writer, we have objects. We call this what object buffer bit reader object reader might knock out a code review, maybe look at doing some motion design cavalry, then watch in bed. Nice, nice. Four and a half hours of sleep, oh geez. Yeah, I got real boring real fast. Harrison might be playing the piano now. Gosh, this is so boring to watch, I'm sure. So we have a bit writer, we're gonna write Fibonacci. An object reader, we're going to insert the... Right, we're not doing this anymore. Object... Object writer... Right, we're going to write the index value T 
table ID, get table ID. If there's a table ID associated with the value, then we're going to write that it is a table, then we'll write a Fibonacci version of the table ID. Otherwise, we're going to write that it's not a table, and we will object writer write the value. State differentiator, write remove writer object I. Easy. We don't actually need this. So we don't actually need the object writer, but I'll get past it anyway. So bit writer, write Fibonacci, I, write change. Bit writer, we write a Fibonacci for the index, insertion index. Then we write the value. <laughs> table ID, we write the table ID. Then we push this value to the object writer. Okay, now we're gonna do table diff. So we have a found table and a stack table. The stack is, it's not, really a, uh, it's it's actually a queue okay I'm very happy that all these things are like five letters so we have a bit writer and object writer we have the state that we're looking at data.cache okay so So now we get a table ID. Yeah, so we get a table ID. If I don't get one, So we care about the cache. The cache is the thing that we're gonna look at to see what the differences are between the cache and like the current state. So cache indices is this. State indices is get sorted indices for the state. We can't rely on having the same, on having it be the same, right? Because we're looking for differences. Initialize is false. This is some like implementation detail. We have an I counter. I should probably call this counter instead of I. So we have the cache state, which is cache indices, state index, state indices, should I use state value? The cache and the state. I think these are pretty okay names. I could also call them old and new. I'll consider that in the future. If they're both nil, then it means we break out. We've, uh, we've finished uh, comparing the tables. Otherwise, let's see. If the state value is table and it's not found, then we're going to insert it into the queue. So I think what I'm going to do is this feels gross and I felt gross writing this last night. So I'll get table ID. So this will determine if it's a table or not and it'll get the ID at the same time.
This table diff will always be called in order. Maybe this is actually fine. So, quick exit if they're not the same, if the index is not the same or the value is not the same. If it's not initialized, we're going to write the table ID, which means that there are changes that need to. And we only want to write it if. It's the first time we know that it has changed. Okay, so write Fibonacci data dot ID. Uh, we don't have table data dot ID anymore. We do have table ID. So order, we're going to okay, we're going to compare the two indices. If the cache index comes after the state index, then it means that we need to add the state index because uh, the cache d does not contain an entry for this for wait for this current state. We need to add a state index. We write two for an insert, and then we write insert writer objects. We don't have a writer anymore. We have a bit writer. We don't need that anymore. Bitwriter. We're passing bitwriter and objects. Yeah. If the cache value is not the same as the state value, let's say we already do that check up here. So we already know that there's a change, and if it wasn't a, it wasn't insert or remove, then it must be just a straight up change, a value. So we don't need to write that final check. Has changed. Two and three. Okay, and now we have the diff function. So we have found and a queue. We have a bit writer, an object writer. Object buffer, a new writer. Mm. Got a table diff, found, queue, bit writer. Writer state. Let's write our, and let's see, Q of I, so we're passing the table directly. Yeah. We'll just call this state for now. Maybe I'll have a better name for it later. Bit writer, we're going to write the Fibonacci zero. 
stop looking for change. And now this is all wrong. Finalize, we return the buffer. <laughs> uh, the table data list. So table data equals self to table list of i. If it's not found, So I need to go in order, so that way it's the same. Well, actually, the yeah, it can't be going along the hash because next is not guaranteed to return the same results in order in the same order uh, on different hardware implementations. in Seattle right now, yeah. Oh, I missed so much chat, I'm sorry. So I need to loop through this thing in order. I need a list to know if I've actually indexed this thing or not. So this actually needs to contain more information. I need to loop through this thing. Uh, Jesus. Well, at least it's more unified between these two, between the integrator and differentiator now. So I only need to make one change. This now needs to have the state in it as well. Now we have table data. Table data. So if we did not find the state, then we need to remove this table. Where the table. Is this referenced by the state? Okay, referenced through the state. Hmm. 
we're going to write Fibonacci 0, we're going to finalize that, finalize this thing, return state differentiator, and we're done in like 223 lines, which is pretty nice. Missing the chat means I'm at work. Yeah. I'm going kind of strong. I've been two watching now. <laughs> Yeah, the fact that people are leaving means that I'm getting boring, which is fine. Eventually I start testing this thing. Okay. No warnings. Right, because I copy pasted this one. Okay, global in. Last table. You edit the hash. Last. Table data list. That's not the table. Cool, this is kind of gross. I kind of want to get rid of this thing. So the basic idea is that we have a list of tables that we found. We need to get all the tables that we did not find because they no longer are referenceable. And then uh, but we need to do this in order. Uh, core is like working on it right now. It's just that there's wow, it's just so complex. It's um, 
Yeah. There's just like a lot of work to do. So I have a list of things that are found. A list of uh, state tables that are found. I need to... Get a list of the ones that were not found. Find table IDs. <laughs> this converts from the state table to the table ID. Okay, so we're going to insert this into found table IDs. Going to sort the found table IDs. And then Actually, we have a list of the IDs that we need to remove. We can go in reverse order. So for i equals Okay. So 
So I'm going to go in reverse order, and I'm going to say this table data list. So this is a table ID. Oh. Kind of an interesting problem. I don't know how to do this in a good way. Found table IDs. This is a list of all the table IDs that I've found. I can go easily from the state to the table ID, but not the other way around. Okay, so I can make this table, found table IDs. I can go through it in reverse. And then I can, in reverse, I can remove things and have it be nice and unique and not mess up any of the indices. I can write Fibonacci table ID, that's the one we're removing, and then we just need to remove it. And then we can just, uh, remove the table. store extra information. Cool. I'm gonna probably just struggle this with struggle with this for a bit. Desert Tech HDI. Mm. Uh, do I mind describing what a state replicator is? A state replicator is something that tries to replicate a state from like server to client or whatever with uh, without like replicating the entire thing over and over and over again because that would be very slow.
So basically the idea, uh, Ursus, is that the player has like a position, a velocity, the direction they're looking, uh, what gun they're currently equipped, the gun stats, etc. This is the player's state. Which gun they have out, etc. Um, recoil values, everything. And we want to compute this on the server because we know that the server isn't hacking. Um, and then send it to the client. And we want to send it to the client, like this, the state is huge. And we can either send the entire state every frame, or we can send little edits, little operations that tell us how to edit the state uh, each frame. And this gets, uh, this is much smaller than you know, you know, the entire state every frame. So it lets us make the state arbitrarily large without, without um, like having to worry about problems with uh, using too much data over the network. Um, but basically the thing is it has to be done in a very specific way because it has to be uh, like I'm going to be generating the state on the client and the server simultaneously and then the client is going to check against the server to make sure that, that it's not messed up anything. Um, and uh, in order to do this, I have to make sure that the, that the way I'm communicating the state from the server to the client is the same every time. Uh, or the way, I need to make sure that it's the delta, the difference between one, uh, like the previous state and the current state is generated in the same way so that way I can quickly compare that on both the server and the client. And so this is like a source of pain. There is also a chance that it just doesn't work, or it's just not fast enough. But I mean, we have cores. We have multiple cores on the server, so it'll probably be fine. So I'm just trying to make the comparison as fast as possible, because we're going to have to do a lot of that. So table at sort, found table IDs. Okay, so I could probably make this. <laughs> Front, let's see, table ID. So I'm making an inverted table right now. I'm not going to sort it anymore. It's, it is, I've been kind of trying over the past month or so, but I've also been doing a lot of other things over the past month, so. But as of right now, I'm pretty confident that I will, like this is a valid way forward. Let's see, so table ID. We're gonna loop in reverse order. If this is found, Yeah, I'll have to fix that. Oh. 
Okay. Yeah, never mind. Yeah, we're gonna have to keep track of both the state and the cash. Okay, fuck it. For table ID is number of table data list, comma one, do. This gives us the table data. If not found table IDs, okay. If not found. Whatever. Actually, the queue's always in the same order. Whatever. I'll just get this working real quick. The ERP situation? Yeah, I don't know. It's, it's kind of like a lot of effort to set up the VR thing each time because the audio settings keep being messed up. So I kind of need to build a new PC, but I don't really want to spend the money to build a new PC. Yeah. So table ID, table data list, one negative one. So if we don't have that state, we're gonna write that, we're gonna remove the table. Remove table given the state. converts from the state
get in. I had Perfect. <laughs> so we need to remove this one. Let me move this table back to you. What do I specifically need a state replicator like that for? Um, I need the state replicator because I want the server to do all the work and have the client just predict what the server is going to do. Um, so that way if somebody hacks on their client, um, it just compares to what the server says they were supposed to do. Um, and the server never trusts anything that the client says. Okay, this is done. <clears throat> okay, so.
Okay. Now, I'll need to write some initialization code eventually, but I'm getting a little bit overwhelmed, so I'll probably just do this. I mean, everything's going to be an insertion operation, so. I mean, I could probably just hard code something. Okay, differentiate. I need to use the bathroom too. Okay. <laughs> Let's see. I'm so scared. Yeah, they do sound mathsy. I'm scared. It's gonna error. Yep. Index nil with cache. Table data. Table data. Table ID, we don't know if it exists or not. Why don't we know if it exists or not? Differentiate table diff state. State is QI1. Oh. Okay, I need to use the bathroom though real quick. I'll be right back. B R B lol, okay.
honestly, this is a little stressful. Let's see. What was the problem again? Right, found, I'm writing to found. the table. I'll probably sit on this a little bit and try different things, but I'm just going to get this working right now. So. We are passing a state, table diff, differentiate, state is QI. It worked. <laughs> if I don't eat, if I don't take my shirt off and eat oatmeal and do push it. <laughs> cool. So it worked. Um, what if I do this? Hey. that didn't work. All right, time to add some debug prints. So, um, I'll start with the differentiator. Are we actually reading all of these things? So close to glory. Okay, so close. So we have state equals q i table diff. We're gonna print peener. Print i in the state, I guess. Okay, one and two. Um, Did I just do that here? No. State differentiator. Print one. 
Oh, I see. Yeah, because I'm printing it before. So something was different. It recognized that this thing was different. And it replicated across. So it must be the state integrator then. Integrate. Okay, two editing tables. This is an insertion. We do a read fib. That's why we do a value or an object reader read cache index cache indices. That worked, I found the bug. Okay, am I doing that anywhere else? Yes, I am. Cool, okay, I think I'm done. <laughs> yeah, it's reassuring to know the smartest person I know <laughs> doesn't also use the debugger. Yeah, I mean, it's, I don't have the debug stuff very much. So it's, it's just not worth learning. I mostly just write it and then I'm done. Let's see, print. That's kind of a flex, actually. Um, I'm going to get rid of this. Okay, so... Now here's the next thing, actually. I need to make sure that I can remove entries. So I'm going to try removing the entry real quick. Um. Oh, it's, it says, oh, it says five. Okay, perfect. So we're just going to name this the 10 just because I, mean, I already know it works. Perfect. So that worked. We were able to remove the entry. Now I'm going to... Uh, dig around in this, so si dot um, it says one thing, perfect okay cool, it works, I'm done I I mean print was created to get information out of the computer 
and every language has a print function or operation or command or whatever. So I think it's reasonable to use it. Okay, so what is left? Well, let's actually try printing out this stuff. Let's. See what it looks like. Cool. So basically, it's a direction, it's a direction tray. Thank you. Um, yeah, so looks like it's pretty efficient at getting stuff across. So this would take up six bits. This would take up, or bytes. This would take up four bytes of information. And there's the, this stuff, which uh, I assume Roblox will take care of, um, compressing this stuff down for me. Uh, as long as I just have a list of stuff. I'm sure Roblox will serialize it. And the reason I'm doing it this way is because, well, one, it's easy. Two, I'm just, I know it's quite minimal. So I have uh, operations and I have data. And the operations sometimes require data from the data list. And uh, anyway, uh, the data list, it'll be um, faster to actually have Roblox serialize this data for me and I don't have to worry about serializing vector threes or C frames or whatever other type of stuff need to be serialized. Um, eventually I might need to do some serialization, but for now this seems fine. Um, in the future I might need to rewrite this. Who knows, I just need to get it working. So uh, yeah, little bit data, object data, differentiate. Okay, so what's left? I need to I need to be able to generate a state integrator from a state differentiator. So I need a, uh, like the state differentiator is just a state holder and the state integrator um, is also a state holder, but I'll need a way to actually transmit a state, which I mean, I already have the means to do. So I need to be able to generate a thing from scratch. Um, maybe I'll just do that right now. So So what I can do is I can actually make all of these, instead of making these stateful, I can make these not stateful.
Do I remember somebody named Weave? I think so. There's the Lua Weaver. And I don't know if Weave is the same person as Lua Weaver. But I think... I think Weave might be a different person, actually. But I remember both of them, kind of. Well, I rem remember Lua Weaver much better. Yeah, I, actually, they're not the same person. I remember both of them. They're different people. So differentiate, uh, dump. Okay. So with dump, I need to build up nothing. Um, State integrator. That's the state integrator. State differentiator. Okay, and now I need to be able to dump this. I'm trying to think if there's a really elegant way to do this or not. So basically, we need to generate something where this list is in the same order. So I guess we can just do it in order. So we can just write the table ID. So table ID, table data is just going to be table data list of table ID. Uh, we're going to do this. Mm-hmm. 
yeah, this definitely has to be different code, I think. Or rather, I don't see it, uh, an advantage of reusing code here that much. So we're going to bit writer. Right. Well, one's always the same. Table ID. And then I guess we can just do Right insert. No, we need to include. writer Okay, and after we're done, we're going to write the number three to show that we're done writing to it. We're gonna write insert, bit writer, object writer. After I get this thing done, I might might just call it. So right insert bit writer object writer I. Cache indices. And then there will be no removals. So again, we can return this thing.
You like how readable my code is? Is my, is my code readable? <laughs> yeah, whenever it's not math, it's usually pretty readable. But um, I know I don't really see a reason to use anything other than one variable long variable names whenever I'm doing math, so. Mm. Nerd who needs to touch grass, yeah. That's funny. Um, dump cash. Okay, so let's look through this. We have a bit writer and object writer. We loop through the table data list. We get the table data from the list, from the table ID. We write the table ID. That's the thing we're creating. We look at every index in order. Cash value. We have a cash. We get the value from the cache. That's the cache value. And then we write insert using the bit writer. We have the bit writer, the object writer. The insertion index, the cache index, and the cache value. It writes that thing. Then we write when we're done. Then we write Fibonacci 0 to say that we stopped. Um, then we need to write another one. removed tables. Then we finalize both the bit writer and object writer, which returns the, 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 the stuff. Okay, 250 lines, state integrator. Um, take a cache dump and we will do self integrate cache dump Think in math, code variables should be kept short in length. Many mathematicians recognize what you're trying to do through patterns anyway. Yeah. Da Vinci Resolve. Going to switch away from Premiere. It's way nicer from first impressions using it. Interesting. Let's see, you don't want long variable names or it'll take longer to understand that code, like reading an essay. Yeah, I, I, I mean, I agree with that. Like, it's obvious when something is a dot product. It's obvious when, like, it lets you black box things easier as well. I mean, math is usually, you don't have to understand everything that's going on in a math thing to figure out what's happening. And if you need to, you can usually figure out what's going on through the pattern of multiplies and adds and divides and whatever. Um, and if not, the variable names aren't really gonna help you much because oftentimes the variables don't represent explicit things. They represent intermediate values, which don't really mean anything. I'm definitely down for some naming of math variables, but oftentimes it doesn't really matter. Um, usually the, the form matters more than the naming of the individual variables with math code. Let's see, so that exists. Okay, so now here's what we're gonna do. Um,
we're actually not going to do that. Side new. New root. Uh, mm, uh, dump cache. Get state. Cool, it prints out a five. I'm pretty sure that printed out a five. It did, okay, cool. So I guess this works then. Now, something I haven't tried is having multiple variables in here. So y equals two, z equals another table with nothing in it. How's about that? Oh, I didn't actually test it. Mm, cool, it doesn't work. Attempt to index nil with y. All right, so that actually doesn't work. State. Why can I not click on this one? Why can't I click on these? Oh, I see, it has nothing in it. State differentiator, dump cache. indices
Oh, I might actually be testing it wrong. Mm. Nope. So I'm differentiating, which means I'm pushing that data. We got bit data, object data. <laughs> object writer finalize, object buffer, new writer. Why does it say zero every time? Oh, because I never finished the code. Nice, okay. Remove the ith value from cache indices. Set the cache cache index equal to state that equal to nil. This is an insertion. Uh, we want to cache cache index. Well, we'll do that. State index equals state value. Mm. That remove insert. Into this thing. Into cache indices, the state index. Integrator table index is nil. Z makes a new table. Y is just equal to five. Y is equal to two here.
is a new table. Y equals equal to two. Z is a new table. Then we go to Y is equal to five. Okay, so this, the object list is looking fine. <sighs> table data dot cache index cache indices I. We're reading a Fibonacci. How far into this are we getting? Because two is two is room. Two is edit. How are we getting to two? Or two is change. How are we doing changing stuff? Okay, surpassing so this at a table. <laughs> table data. Get an operator two. Why why are we getting an operator two? Right insert. Right, because we have to do this ourselves. We have to indicate that we are doing an insertion. And then we indicate that we are stopping. Okay, cool, this should work now. Five, two, and a table, cool, okay. Americanism, right? I don't know. I'm trying to think of what it is in the UK. Porridge? Maybe that's the same thing. Who knows? Also, hello, Xander. Have I eaten anything? Let's see. Let me type in the background. XD. Uh, have I eaten anything today yet? Um, I had some uh, Starbucks. We got Starbucks this morning. tried their, they have a sausage biscuit that has not real sausage in it, so I got that. I tried that, it was pretty good. I might get it in the future, uh, cruelty free, which is kind of nice. And uh, I got some banana bread, and I got two large lattes, so that's good. One for there and one to go. Um, Little Zinnamon was there with me, which is fun. Okay, so it looks like this is working. These are two different tables. Now I'm gonna try removing stuff from this. Um, okay, so let's remove y. y equals nil. Okay, we're gonna differentiate our state differentiator. Don't need to print the bit data anymore. Uh, I don't need to print this anymore, nor this. Um, I don't need to print this. Uh, 
assign new, we're gonna integrate our bit data and object data, and then we'll print out both of these things. So we're gonna try printing off just all of these things again. Cool, and we get that Y has been removed. We've got that this thing on both of these. So it looks like it's generating the same state. <laughs> Thought of like a sausage cookie. Um, a sausage on a biscuit, I mean, with some egg and cheese. Um, yeah, cool. I guess this is working now, so that's pretty nice. I think Harrison's turning on the keyboard. Cool. How much do I bench? Uh, not much right now, like 150 pounds. What's a biscuit? A biscuit is like, well, there's different ways to do biscuits. But typically they look like this. And they're pretty good. They're like a very flowery, Kind of thing that's very buttery. Um, I bench 150 because I dislocated my shoulder and I can't do my normal weight. So I don't actually, so I'm like slowly building back up. Uh, so I don't actually know how much I can bench anymore, but it was like 200 something. I don't know, like 220 or 230 or something like that. The shoulder's doing much better now. It's It still hurts to like put it behind my back or whatever, but it hurts less. And so, and it's hurting less all the time. Like compared to a week ago, it feels better. I'm gonna work out tonight. Um, one of the problems with the workout room that we have as a part of this apartment is that it doesn't have a, a like a, a bench press, uh, like, a bar. Less hurt is good, yeah. Um, I might have messed it up for my life, but I don't really care. It's probably fine. Alright, cool. I'm going to just save this. I think I'm a pulled every technique out of the book, so optimize this way to make it. Um yeah, go ahead and send that over and I'll I'll look at it. Do you have like a link to something?
Oh, you're gonna have to leave for now? I'd rather do it on stream. That's all right with you. I'll shoot the stream next week. If you can come back next week, I'll, I'll take a look at it. Because I'm kind of done at this point. How long am I streaming for? Uh, let's see. I've been streaming for three hours, I think. I think I, I did what I wanted to accomplish. Um, so I'm going to just call it quits for now. Uh, the next thing that I'm going to try to do is start using this state differentiator uh, to replicate state across the network. And I'll make a client prediction model that's going to try to predict what the server is doing. And Mesh deformation now. So you're using a hexagon spatial partition or regular cell space. Hexagonal spatial partitioning. Mm. So mesh deformation math. Yeah, I don't know. I've never really messed around with that before. Um, so I don't really know how to optimize it. Binary spatial partitioning would benefit me because of the memory usage and complexity. Actually, Eltov might be able to help you on that more than me. Uh, I'll take a look at it. I don't know if I can help you with that or not. It's not really something I have done before. Sorry to throw your name there. Yeah, maybe the math I could help you with, though mostly with math, the most important thing is the numerical stability, because CPUs are pretty fast these days doing that. Yeah, I mean, I could I could probably help optimize the math a little bit by caching some stuff. I think. Memoize, yeah. Hmm. Memoization can actually be uh, can actually hurt performance sometimes, depending on how much data is actually being cached.
All right. See y'all. Oh, hi, Biosphere. Yeah, sorry. I'm in the stream right now. Maybe I'll do some more stuff tonight, but I'm like a little bit overwhelmed with this. At least it works, but I don't like the code. So, anyway, see y'all later.